sit on the toilet and peace. Like, you should oh, welcome back to my channel how you guys been i hope you guys are well today i'm going to do a reaction to one of my favorite which is learning more about a culture i have been obsessed with in a certain way or another so i feel why don't i learn about it because i'm planning to actually go there and if you're wondering what country i'm talking about is japan japan i love anime i love manga i read manga like i don't know for so many times <laughs> like i can remember i'm always on manga I will, you will never see me without reading manga I get so obsessed with like dive into it like I kind of cancel people around me <laughs> sometimes I just like I don't want to work I want to read manga if there's ever a job out there that will say you can read manga for the whole day without doing anything else please let me know because I would literally would do that I would do that if I can read manga without actually being distracted by other stuff i would literally love it i love that type of job which is hard to find because i don't think i will ever find one if any guys of you guys see one over there let me know down in the comment and i know i'm talking a lot let's get started this video is going to be about seven things i need to know before coming to japan technically things i need to know before going to japan so because i'm planning to go to japan this year so i want to know things that i need to be cautious of because listen my japanese speaking is not is none existent so i need to make sure i behave myself and not get myself in trouble so let's see what this guy had to say and how interesting it is cool let's get started so japan just announced that they are fully reopening its borders to foreigners starting next week and about a year ago i made a video sharing top eight things to know before coming to japan and while that list is still valid today i wanted to add seven more tips from my local perspective that i'm pretty sure you'll thank me later for as usual Ooh. it's going to be pretty random Meaning, and brutally honest wait, so buckle up he's in it's a local perception, meaning that he's in Japan, right? Or is Japanese? Okay, let's just let's get right into it. Toilet. Is that for the I'm men perspective? I'm genuinely curious to know what you guys think about this, whether you guys are male or female. Because I okay. was literally made fun of back when I was in the States for sitting on the toilet seat and peeing. Literally while I was scripting this video, my Japanese American friend Shota said, Who sits on the toilet and pees? Like, you should. What? To me, it's just how I was brought up here. All my Japanese friends sit in pee, and in fact, this study conducted by one of Japan's major companies shows that more than 62% of Japanese men do the same, and that number is rapidly increasing each year. Although 70% of Japanese men actually do prefer standing up, I think it shows how much Japanese people care about others and keep places as clean as possible. When I lived with my Nigerian friend Jesse, though, the other Japanese roommate Masato and I would always complain about how he would stand up when peeing but we only gave him an exemption because he told us his bbc was big enough to touch the bottom of the toilet when he sits down so i mean nobody cares okay. about what you do if you live alone but if you decide to coexist with others or visit your japanese friend's place do them a favor by sitting down while peeing come on it's not that hard i would literally would like every single one of you guys do well, that needless to say you won't find everything you have in your country in japan as someone who has lived in multiple countries i'd say it's best to live with what we already have in japan and adjust to the lifestyle here that being said here are the few things i think you might want to bring okay Deodorant. So many studies show that Japanese people, among other East Asians, genetically have less of these smelly sweat glands called upper green glands, making body odor less I'm jealous. For us. These stinky glands are commonly found in non-East Asians' armpits and also ears, making their earwax kind of wet, unlike our dry and flaky ones. So simply put, uh, as much as I hate to put it this way, if your earwax is wet, we might think you're stinky. Since Japanese people with these smelly sweat glands are super rare here, we are really sensitive to the smell. And as terrible as it sounds, we Japanese people definitely talk about the people with this smell behind their back all the time. Those people are called wakiga in Japanese. If you're interested, look it up. In fact, it's so rare that if someone falls into this small percentage, instead of buying deodorant, many people will choose to get these glands surgically removed. And it's covered by our national health insurance as something you need. You might even come wow. across these advertisements on the street. Again, this is something you definitely won't find in Japan. In fact, I've never seen this type of deodorant until I went to the States. So if you use one, please don't forget to pack one in your suitcase. Also, another thing is that since Japanese sizes typically run small, it might be hard to find clothes and shoes that fit you. Especially shoes. If you don't have good quality, durable shoes that are actually your size, you're gonna have a really hard time because you'll be walking a lot. 
Okay, so I need to put my own shoes. Let's talk or about if I want to do shopping. tourist trap looking tourist traps. By that I mean it's a type of place I see so many foreigners go to, but it makes me go. It's around ramen. I mean, I get it. There are whole system where you can eat ramen noodles in private. It's the perfect place for introverts. But the quality of the ramen itself, though, it's so. Meh, and they crank up the prices knowing foreigners will still come to eat their overpriced mediocre ramen I always recommend people go to the more local ramen shops but if you okay. were to visit a chain I couldn't recommend Tenkai Ping and Marigan enough as they are both favorite among other Japanese people as well Capsule Hotels <laughs> so let me make one thing clear. Capsule Hotel or Capsule Hotels were originally meant for Japanese office workers. It was a cheap place people would go to to get a few hours of sleep before going back to their 12 hour shifts. But nowadays, oh. since its unique concept became popular among foreigners, it's not as cheap as it used to be or should be. So instead of spending your precious money to sleep in a shitty cubicle, I highly recommend you go to a Japanese love hotel. I guarantee you 100% that you have more unique experience, more privacy, and some magical time. If you know what I mean. Family okay. Form. Can someone please explain how? I feel a little bit bad about this one about the cube thing because I wanted to try it. <laughs> I actually wanted to try it. I think we may have already book one. It's a manga one because we wanted to read manga at the same time. Like relax. It's only one day. We didn't book like for the whole thing. It's only one day. So maybe they'll forgive us for that. It just we wanted to experience it. We are not going there to stay. We actually have a hotel book, but we want to experience it. Was like the capture is so like you say in my bucket list. Take I did went to that type of thing. So please forgive us. We just wanted to go there for the manga and the calmness of it because we don't want to buy book we may not understand the language so. plus i may buy the book when i come back so i don't want my bag to be heavy with i know myself i will buy a lot of books so <laughs> i'll try to limit myself that's how i compromise with going to a capsule where i can read all the book i want without buying all of them and then buy the one that i feel like i can carry back to london thank you forgive me Let's go. Famima became so overrated. For some reason, it seems like every foreigner in Japan overhypes Famima, and I don't get it. What's Famima? It it's brand colors or the Famima wrap that Miyaji and Matt can made? Please explain because I'm so confused. If you're wondering too. what the real Spiria Konbini in Japan is, it's no doubt 7 Eleven. This isn't even oh, yeah. a subject to opinion because it's I know always that. the consensus among my Japanese friends. I also looked up every survey done by Japanese people's favorite Konbini's, and 7 Eleven always, without fail, stop in the ranking. I even made a video with my friend Shota doing a side-by-side -side comparison of various products from both 7-Eleven and Family Mart. And for pretty much everything, we came to the conclusion that 7-Eleven products tasted better. So guys, please That's give the Japanese 7-Eleven a chance. I promise. Maybe because I read too much manga, but I know more of 7-Eleven than Family Mart. I didn't even know that until he said it. Interesting. Not the same as the one you might be used to. Because every time we look, always check if we have like a 7-Eleven next to the hotel we book and we have like a station next to it, not far, like walking distance and then you have like restaurant next to it. So it will be much convenient because I tend to eat a lot, if you don't know. I don't eat like a lot in one sitting. I'll eat small portion in a lot of different hours sitting, meaning like right now I'm actually hungry. <laughs> so I want to eat. I eat a lot. So if I want to go out in my bedroom when like I know that restaurant in the hotel is closed and then they have a 7-Eleven uh, closed, I know they're open 24-7, which is the one I want. I can go get some food and eat without starving myself to bed. Anyway, let's continue this. Questions I get asked the most is, Shun, how can I make Japanese friends? What can I do to make oh, yeah, friends I want to with make a my cool, Japanese friends? smart and handsome Actually, I want to date one. like you, Shun? Well, jokes aside, I have to admit that Japanese people are infamous for not being able to make friends very easily. But True. trust me, as not a Japanese people, Korean people, Chinese people, Japanese people, all three of you guys, you guys are so hard to even come close to talking to. It's like, I feel like you guys limited yourself, like saying that we would not understand you guys or like dedication wise, maybe, I'm, I'm just guessing. I think that you guys think that we was kind of like stupid. <laughs> if that makes sense and don't like know how to behave or certain type of things at the same time i had a conversation with like a japanese guy recently and he was telling me how it's more to deal with like shyness that like, because of the language barrier 
so you guys sorry guys i found out that it was a recording because my memory got full so i had to retake this one that's why you see different clothes anyway so what i was saying was that because of the way that we see things or behave because of where we grow up it kind of affects us in a way when it comes to make a friend with like japanese people because they will ask questions that we would normally typically think that why you're asking that is private but for them they just want to know if you are like introverts or they're the type of people that similar to them before they become close to you for example if there's like a baseball or a football type of uh, introvert type of people they wouldn't want to hang out with those type of people instead of like the crazy extrovert type of people so they ask those type of questions and we are like the opposite we like doing small talk like hey have fun let's go have a drink let's talk and talk about stupid things and random things so they kind of like reserved in that kind of sense in a way so that's my take i think i'm not so sure but it depends i feel like it's the culture thing that come to play their culture is different than us and they have some respect on certain things or we receive things then we see it i'm not so sure that's just my way of thinking anyway let's go back to this but trust me as much as people True. say that it's hard for me to make friends with a non-japanese person as well and i'm talking about like the actual friends not the superficial kind you just add on facebook and never speak to again so i asked myself what kind of foreigners do i usually get along with as a japanese person and here's my answer in japan people are not as friendly as westerners in the early stages right they are more reserved and almost close-minded at first compared to someone like you and i think the hardship of making new japanese friends lies in this the difficulty of breaking the ice so yep. how do japanese people do it we ask questions but not about the weather or favorite colors it all comes down to knowing what questions to ask and also what their answers tell about the type of person they are for example in the states when someone tells you that they're homeschooled for example that alone give you some idea of what they're like right or you may talk about the 16 personalities or zodiac signs all of which i had no idea about and i was really like emotionally trained trying to keep up with it all because in japan those questions are completely different we ask questions such as what blood type are you what school club are you in if they're in a soccer club for example you'd assume that they're extroverted with a very active social life or you may get mm -hmm. asked do you like ramen or soba noodles or are you a nem or s are you rike or bunge without knowing any japanese culture you might think how can one make such quick assumptions based see on what i mean without the cultures so they'll ask questions that will think like why you need to know all of this type of thing so we kind of do like the reverse we're more like into like get to know you before we say oh maybe you're not my type of friend type of situation it's weird because different people have different way of going about when you come to make a friend so you never know until you actually talk to the person which is hard because you had to actually go and speak to the person if you want to talk to the person which is the hard part because listen i'm not good when it comes to approaching people so it's kind of like i'll wait for them to approach me <laughs> even though they do not yeah on these questions but trust me japanese people love to put people into boxes and stick with the ones within their box so these kinds of conversations play a pretty significant role when it comes to meeting someone in japan so my top advice is to study the culture beforehand because if we find something that we can relate yeah, to it becomes so much easier for us to let our guard down and open up to people maybe even more so than westerners in the long run but if you're too lazy to do the research i may or may not have compiled a list of questions you can ask japanese people that actually get the conversation going so if okay. you're interested please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment down oh, below so i know it's it. worth making a separate video about okay out of everything i mentioned in this video this is probably the most important thing yet yeah, i'm shocked that okay. people don't really know about this and it's not really talked about online either which is what to do in case of emergency like getting involved in an accident getting into okay, a fight I need or to getting know injured this. which i hope won't happen to any of you guys but if we did this is what you should do if you witness or are in an emergency situation that needs help from the police please call 110 for example in case of a traffic accident violence assault snatching things like that 
call 110. And if you need immediate help from the fire department or need an ambulance, call 119. Yes, in Japan, we have different numbers for different situations. So oh, let's do, let's that's say, hard to remember all of them. Always and here's the list of numbers that I mentioned, along with some more that may be helpful for you guys. So take a screenshot of it for your future reference. Also, they have operators who speak English and other languages. So please don't hesitate to call these numbers if needed. With that being said, I can't emphasize enough how knowing even a little bit of Japanese can be a lifesaver when you come here. Okay, on that note about speaking the language and trying to learn, I actually have this book, which I don't even know where I put it. I ordered it when I was like 2019, when I was preparing to go to Japan in 2020 before it got cancelled. So I still have the book. It's kind of like a, a book for learning Japanese for dummy, if that makes sense. It, because it takes certain world or pictures in English and then when you read it, it sounds in Japanese. I would take a picture of it and then put it here somewhere, but it's actually good. I try it and then I was like oh my gosh this is so cool <laughs> even though it's not technically how you're supposed to learn Japanese but it's kind of makes sense for me especially say when it comes to Japanese I need a book for dummy because I'm a dummy when it comes to that anyway I'll put a picture here I'll also put a link to it down in the description so have a look you may actually enjoy it Japanese so is Japan not safe. This image of being obviously, extremely safe, and I'm sure you've come. The reason why I say obviously because I'll always say a country, no matter where you are, is never fully safe. There's human living in that country, so you will never know what will happen. It may be safe in certain type of like safety net because there's different type of safety you can think of. There's crime, killing, guns, knife, all this kind of thing. Those are different type of safety. And there's war, all this type of different type of safety. But the common crime that you find in every country, no matter what country you think is safe, is thief and pickpocket. Like any country you think, they're always going to find one of them. It's never safe. You, there's always going to be an issue when it comes to those type of things. Anyway, let's get Come across videos online where people leave their valuables unattended and not have it stolen. Or maybe you've even heard Japanese locals bragging about its safety. But let's not make the you mistake did. of thinking this country is free of petty crimes like theft. Actually, See? in the 25 years of my life in Japan, I've had a lot of things stolen. Some of the common things people steal are things like wallets, phones, umbrellas, bicycles, or even women's underwear. Yeah, oh, wow. people steal women's underwear like all the time. That's Since creepy. houses and apartments in Japan are so small, there's pretty much no space for a dryer, even if you wanted one. So 70% of people actually air dry their clothes outside. I'm we sorry do it offense, too. But this is just something you might need to get used to. However, if you're a girl who ends up living on the first floor of an apartment in Japan, you might want to consider air drying your clothes inside your room not the outside. I don't mean to scare you or anything, but I just feel like a lot of these videos online set on unrealistic expectations for foreigners when it comes to safety in Japan. So my point is, don't let your guard down just because you're in Japan, especially in the city. Okay. If there's one law in Japan that isn't talked about enough, but I think you should be careful of, it's definitely this. The defamation law. In Japan, you can literally sue someone for defamation if they damage Seriously? your public image. Whoa, whoa, hold up. I'm not going to Japan to damage anyone's image. Yeah. So what you're thinking? What makes this law different in Japan and actually kind of scary is that it applies even if the statements are true. Let me explain. A few years oh. ago, one of my female friends found out that her long-term boyfriend was cheating on her with multiple women. As kind of expected, Ew. she lost her sanity and shared everything he did on her Instagram stories yeah very intense and later oh, on she got sued it. by her boyfriend for publicly damaging his reputation and as a no result way. she was fined a few thousand us dollars can you even imagine getting cheated on and having to pay a few thousand dollars only in japan another <laughs> example is writing a review i've heard so many cases where customers got sued for writing an honest review online about their experience with a product or service even though oh. their statements were completely true well with this law specifically the offense it cannot be allow... prosecuted without a complaint by the victim so it's not like you're gonna get charged every time okay wait so if for example let's just say i went to japan yeah and then i give my honest review about it when i go back to america would they still sue me because I give my honest opinion about what I think about the service? They can't sue me for that. I'm not even in the country, right? Right? Let me know that in the comment. 
because this one is a little scary. Um, you write a review online or anything, but you might want to be a bit careful of what you say or what you write online here in Japan. All right, that's it for today. I hope you guys found this uh, somewhat helpful. And if you guys yeah, can think of... it was actually very helpful. If you guys enjoyed this video as well, you should go and see him on his channel. His name I cannot pronounce, so he is his name. I think he did amazing and actually enjoy what he did i hope you guys enjoyed this i will do other video related to japan because i love the culture so we may as well learn together so i will see you guys on the next video bye